guys, this is Abhinav, this is my Triumph Speed Trooper 675. You've seen me on YouTube, you've seen me riding the Yamaha YTF R15 V3. I always tell you that I have a Speed Trooper but I've never shown it to you in a video. So today I'm going to show you my Speed Trooper and how it is to ride in traffic and on a highway. I'm back on my way from Nimrana Fort to Delhi. I've covered about 60 kilometers. I have 60 kilometers left of which some 30 kilometers would be peak traffic. With me will be a billion. So today you will get to see firsthand how riding a super bike in Delhi in traffic with a billion feels like. Right guys, that's my billion Amrita. Amrita say hi. Okay, so time to get on the bike and get back home to Delhi. Amrita hop on. Man, this motorcycle just flies. I love the R15 but it comes nowhere close to this motorcycle's capabilities on a highway as is expected. The smoothness of this motor. Also its cruising ability is unmatched. You do face a lot of wind blast at higher speeds, speeds above 130, 140 or so. But that can be solved by just a simple fly screen. I have a Pooj fly screen that I've taken off. I took it to, uh, where did I take it? I took it to Jalandhar when I was building my gym at home. And um, using that fly screen, I was able to sit upright at 200 kilometers an hour. So a fly screen can be very effective in ensuring your motorcycle turns into a lovely tourer. This motorcycle, I primarily use it as a street fighter to attack corners on the Burga Faridabad road that I have shown you previously in my videos. In my opinion, this is the best motorcycle that is sold in our country. It's light, it's extremely light. It weighs only about 169 kilos, that is the dry weight fully fueled up it is under 190 kilos that's fairly light for a super bike just hear the sound i have a quick shifter on the bike so upshifts do not require me using the clutch if you want to ride like a hooligan there's no better bike than the sweet triple if you want to commute in a very simple, smooth, easy manner, I think there's no better bike than the Street Triple in the city. It does not heat a lot, very little, and if you're wearing riding gear and riding boots, you'll never find out. It can run like a Pulsar, and it can give liter-class motorcycles a run for their money. Even with a pillion, I am gunning the motorcycle because it just eggs you. It really begs you to give it the beans. And no, that's not stealing uh, the catchphrase of Faisal Khan, the editor of Motorbeam. Let's see what sort of fuel economy my motorcycle is giving. It's completely modded out. I have a Project SC GPM2 exhaust on it. I'm not running a baffle, so it's bloody loud. I have a Eurospec map in here. I have a k and air filter. I have block off plates. I just told you about the quick shifter earlier. Let's see how much fuel economy does it give. Okay, even with riding like that, riding at 140 constant, I'm still getting 19.6 kilometers to a liter. I think the Duke 390s, they give about 24, 25. So almost 20 kilometers to a liter is not bad on a super bike, right? Any motorcycle, if you want to tow on it, should at least be able to cover 250 kilometers minimum and this motorcycle surely does that when i went to jalandhar last year this motorcycle was able to do 280 kilometers on a tank full of gas again as usual i'm running speed 97 now had it had lesser range I would have had to fuel up on the highway and I would not have got speed 97. I would have had to make do with probably regular fuel. 
and I don't like running super bikes on regular fuel. I don't even like running regular bikes on regular fuel because bikes just run so much smoother with better quality fuel. It's like your body. If if you exercise, you have your protein shakes, right? You have the best possible diet that you can. You gotta put good fuel in the motorcycle for it to run properly. It's as simple as that. Take care of your motorcycle; it will take care of you. Now, even though I'm doing only about a hundred, there is there is just no vibration. I asked my pillion earlier; she is pretty comfortable. Uh, we we went to Nimrana, which is about 120 kilometers from home. We took one break. That was at the Manna Dhaba to meet some colleagues. She went there without any discomfort. So this motorcycle is very pillion friendly. The only one problem that I face with this bike is actually there are two. The front suspension is non-adjustable. Okay. The front suspension is completely non-adjustable and I find it very stiff especially on Indian highway so if it goes over a pothole it gives your back a bit of a workout. There's a big jerk that comes in and it's not nice. So I'm scared that the rims might get bent someday. But what do you do? You'll have to live with these highways. The second problem that I face with this motorcycle is the ground clearance. It has an oil sump right under the engine. And uh, if you have a pillion on, which I usually don't, no matter how slow you would go over a speed breaker, one of those really ridiculously designed speed breakers, this motorcycle, it, it sort of uh, touches those speed breakers and that's not nice. So you don't want a busted oil sump in the middle of the ride when you're on the highway or anywhere for that matter, but definitely not on a highway. These are the only two complaints that I have from this motorcycle. Otherwise, I have covered about eight and a half thousand kilometers on it in my two years of ownership. I could not ride this motorcycle for the major part of it after I had I after I had a cycling accident in which I broke my collarbone. I was trying to take a 20 foot jump on a mountain bike. Did not go very well. So my collarbone is now held together with a metal plate and some 13, 14 screws. So that put me out for about six months of riding. But now that I'm back riding and now, you know, the monsoon's about to clear out, I'm going to ride this motorcycle way too often. The plan is to take it to the racetrack. I right now have a set of uh, stock tires on this motorcycle. They've done very well so far. The very sticky rubber Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s. But I'm thinking of upping the game. I'm thinking of getting the Diablo Super Corsa tires for it. Look at that guys, if you're just cruising on the highway, you don't have to downshift. You just don't have to downshift. This motorcycle just leaps forward in the sixth gear. Doesn't matter what revs you are at, it has plenty of torque. That's what I really like about inline triple engines. It's got the characteristics of uh, of an inline four engine that has loads of horsepower, and it also has some characteristics of a V-twin. That's torque. This motorcycle has plenty of torque, plenty of horsepower, enough to keep you engaged, enough to keep you keep your spirits very high when you're riding out on a free highway like this. It does uh, zero to hundred in about three and a half seconds. It tops out at a little over 230 kilometers an hour. Well, that's that's the speed that I've taken it to. My friend Kunal has done about 240 something kilometers. I think he managed to hit 242 kilometers per hour on his motorcycle. A lot of people that I know have uh, upgraded from this motorcycle to the new Street Triple. This is not in the market anymore, the 675. This model has been discontinued. You now get the 765 the 765S and the 765RS. The RS is the top of the line version which has uh, Brembo M50 monoblock calipers up front, Showa big piston fork, 
Olin suspension at the rear. Well, I have an Olin suspension as well, Olin TTX that comes on the Daytona R. That, this is an aftermarket product. I don't think it makes sense for anybody to sell this motorcycle and upgrade to a Street Triple 765 because it would not be that big of a jump until and unless you're getting the RS and you plan to take your motorcycle to the racetrack. Then I guess it, it, make, it makes sense. It seems justified to get rid of this, which I most certainly will never ever do and get the other model, the newer model. Guys, check out the beautiful quick shift on this bike. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Easy. Shifts are smooth as butter, but this is only an uh, upshift only quick shifter. The intake sound of this motorcycle. It's, it's distinct. No other motorcycle has it. It's a trait of the street triple, probably because of its inline triple design. And guys, if you see, I'm right now, I'm not riding much faster than I would on my R15. Yet this motorcycle feels so much more comfortable. So for people who think that riding a superbike is not comfortable, well, you couldn't be farther from the truth. A street naked motorcycle like this is way more comfortable than a committed super sport style motorcycle than the R15. The seat is reasonably hard, which is a good thing if you want to ride long distance. Both for the rider and the pillion, because the soft seat, beyond a certain point, it starts to sag, it makes you uncomfortable, and then you have to take frequent breaks. Okay, finally we have bad traffic. Okay, let's see if I can also do this. Right at the corner of the road, like everybody else. See, I told you there's no escaping rush hour traffic. I'll just stick it to the side. This is line to take whenever you're stuck in traffic on a motorcycle. The innermost line. Most motorcyclists, they make their way through here. There's one thing that I haven't talked about yet. This motorcycle does not come with a slipper clutch and yet the clutch pull is very light it really rides like a pulsar yeah, if you wanted to by that what it means what i mean is this motorcycle rides very easy This motorcycle is nimble enough to ride in traffic just like any other motorcycle, any small motorcycle. And that's what I wanted to show you today. Thank you again for all the time that you have devoted in watching this video and all the love and support. I recently hit 5000 subscribers on YouTube. Guys, I, I, I can't thank you enough. I had no idea when I started doing this. When I uploaded my first video on YouTube, I did it to show it to my friend. I did not intend to make it public. I had no intentions of being a moto vlogger. I still don't consider myself to be a moto vlogger. But I just released it. I, I showed it to my friend because it was too big to send on WhatsApp. So I put it up on YouTube. I had it on the... Uh, unlisted mode and I just sent a link to my friend I thought hey it doesn't look that bad so why not let's make it public and that's how my motor vlogging journey began I think the point has been made this motorcycle is extremely nimble to ride in traffic 
to me it's the best overall sports bike available in india now it's time to end the vlog thank you so much for watching bye bye